Hello and good afternoon. Uh, my name is Elizabeth from Elizabeth Emerson Designs and I want to take a moment to show you how to make uh, something out of wired ribbon. So many people think it's more of a throwaway, but it has its place. So this is the rose that we are going to make today. It is attached to the base of buckram and makes a great millinery flower or really anywhere you need a historically accurate flower to be able to put on costumes. So I'm going to set this aside. And the first portion that we want to do is we want to make the base like this. You want approximately two rounds. So if you look here, they kind of line up like that. Uh, and that's to give you fullness so that you can manipulate it and crunch it up and have it look just like you want it. So the materials you're going to need today, uh, tiny needle nose pliers, hefty needle, and a good pair of scissors that you don't mind damaging. Now for the center portion, we're going to need stamens and wire. So pretty simple. Uh, and you can use vintage, which in this case, this ribbon is vintage uh, acetate ribbon from France with a copper edge, or you can use the modern stuff, which is just fine. So everything here today is going to be by ribbon width. So here's my ribbon, okay? It's an inch and a half wide, which is one ribbon width. So if I was to have 10 ribbon widths, I would have 15 inches of this ribbon, okay? So for the base, I recommend between... Um, 15 and 20 ribbon widths. So if it's 20 ribbon widths, it would be about 30 inches of fabric. So we have our 30 inches of ribbon here. Uh, and you're going to go ahead and start uh, by exposing the tip here. And you're going to slowly walk this down. Okay? You can't just pull on the end and expect it to whoop, ruch all the way down. So work it, work it all the way down. Okay, so I am just putting the finishing touches on my um, base ruching here. And I have the end bit. I'm going to finish that up. And I'm going to hold it tight. And this is how we're going to secure this. Uh, the ribbon portion of the rose is not held together by thread. The only thread we need is to attach the rose to the base. Okay, about an inch long. I rocked it back and forth to break it. You don't need wire cutters. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take this point and put it back through uh, the fabric as close as I can to the wire. Uh, and this will effectively uh, act as a knot. Uh, and that will keep this from falling off the end. I'm going to repeat this on the other half. And you, don't want, to make, you want to make sure not to cut too much of the wire off because if it goes back into the shell, uh, being the ribbon, you're kind of out of luck. So go ahead and repeat on this side. Uh, and the tiny needle nose pliers really make things handy. These are beading pliers. Uh, so we have our nice little ruched base petals here. And we have the double layer I was referring to. Uh, and now we need to lay it out on our buckram. So we have about a four inch square of buckram here. It doesn't really matter. You'll be cutting excess off. If you want to use this for the base of your hat and then block it in place and then use your rose on it, that also works too. So you could be using your hat base. Um, so what we're going to do is sort of lay out the base of our rose here. See what size we're going to make it. Make sure everything overlaps. Okay, looks good. Double lapping. So I'm going to pick this up and you'll see that there's like a nice circle there. Uh, you can take a pencil or a pen or just wing it uh, to go around there. I first want you to take this and go around with a whip stitch, stitching this base circle into place. And then the second row, bring it in a little bit. So it's a little tighter the second time, kind of like a spiral. Uh, and then repeat that here. And that's going to leave you with the base portion of your flower. So we have the uh, base portion double layered and sewn down. Um, 
And I use the uh, waxed silk for this process because it's strong and it's less likely to break. Uh, and it takes some serious abuse. So the thing we need to add to this now is going to be petals. So these are the little petals that we're going to make. That's the front side that's all pretty that's going to go there. This is the back side which uh, as you can see is not as nice. Again, all held together with wire. There's no thread in this. So you can make these in the car without needles floating around. It's just kind of a fun different way of making flowers. Okay, so each petal is going to be two ribbon widths. So in this case, if you remember, I said that my ribbon was one and a half inches wide, so I'm going to need a three inch piece of ribbon to be able to make my petal. So you're going to take the um, pliers, you're going to pull a little bit, careful not to pull it out the other side because you're going to be in trouble, uh, and then this other half of it, you're going to go ahead and do the same thing. You're going to pull. And then just like you did with your um, bottom ruffles, you're going to go ahead and take this and loop it back through to lock it in place. And this is just so that you have it so that the petal itself, when done, you're going to do that on both sides. It'll look like this. So here's my little finished bobble. Um, and I'm going to, on the top edge, take the wire, pull out a few millimeters, and make a little circle, okay? And then I'm going to take those little circles, and I say circle because it just makes it a little bit easier and more neat for it to grasp onto when you're doing this. So you're going to take those two little circles, pinch together, twist one, two, three times, uh, and then you're going to fold over. You don't want to twist much more than that because this wire that's in the ribbon isn't very strong and it'll fatigue and break. Okay, so I'm going to take that and fold it flat. And there is your petal, just like there. Okay, so I have a cluster of about uh, 10 to 15 petals per rose that I've finished. And these are really great because you can make a lot of them in a row. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to take these. I start off with two uh, and you'll sew those in place. And you're just going to layer. So then I take two on one side and I'll layer. And repeat on the other side until you end up with a nice little cup with a center area that will fit the stamen center, okay? So when that's done, and again, you're gonna use probably between 10 and 15 petals uh, for the larger roses, less petals for smaller ones. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our center little bunch. It's also a way to make a bud that is gonna cup and hold the stamens. So here are five double-sided floral stamens. You can get these online. And what I like to do is I like to take my wire in the center, fold this over, take my pliers and wrap, take the shorter end of this towards the stamens, and then I wrap. And I want to wrap down towards the end here so that I have something to build my stamen center on. Okay, so this is what your base is going to be. Um, I'll pull that little edge piece down like that. So we have the center stamen portion finished, and we need about five ribbon lengths of wired ribbon. Uh, and we're going to do the same thing as we did for the exterior. 
of the two layers of rose petals. So I'm going to go ahead and take part of this and smush it down. And this one, it helps if it's kind of tight. You don't want to pull too hard because you don't want your wire to break, which is a big no-no. Um, so I'm going to go this half, go ahead and secure it. And then I'm going to go on to my other half and finish the ruching. I usually start with one end and try to tie it off as quickly as possible so it's not lost inside of it. Okay, remember, I'm just gonna make this a little bit extra tight. So ruching it really close. Uh, I have about an inch and a half there. Uh, fatigue and break it off. Go ahead, pop it back down. Secure off. And there you go. So now you're going to want to take these pieces and uh, you're going to want to fold in about a centimeter to a half or half inch or so. And then you're going to fold this under. And this is going to give you the finished edge within your stamen cluster. So what I like to do is I like to make sure that the stamen is sticking out the bottom of my piece. All right. So usually about right there. And I'm going to make sure to have a piece of wire on hand because I'm actually going to wrap the base of it in wire to hold the petals in place. And then I can use that wire to secure uh, the center portion into our standing cluster. So go ahead and I'm going to pinch that back a little more to make it a little bit shorter. And I'm just going to start to wrap. Okay. And remember, this is supposed to look like a center, so you can get a little creative. And there we go. So this little part is like a little nestled center bit for your inside of your rose. Uh, and then I'm going to take my wire, secure it in place, and firmly whip stitch this around like this. Excuse me, whip wrap it, should I say? It's not exactly stitch. Uh, and then wrap into place. And there we go. So this is ready to be inserted into here. And you're, what you're going to do is you'll take this piece, nestle down amongst your sewn in petals like this. And when you have more petals, it'll look floofier. Uh, and just sew it right down into the center of it until it's nestled in place. Once it's all sewn, you can then go through and you can puff up your rose to make it look, you know, you can open petals up a little bit, you can um, put some down, you can give it character, okay? So if you'd like the long course in this, which goes through every single step and explains why, which is an hour long, I do offer that on my website, elizabethemersondesigns.com for purchase, and that also comes with a PDF packet with explanations. Uh, thank you so much, and have a wonderful day.